Okay, so today we're gonna talk about uh, the it, the data structures in Python uh, for you. So I think uh, the prof has explained quite well in lecture uh, that if you wanna store like uh, uh, several objects into one, if you wanna store a lot of stuff into one, then you use uh, what you call sequences. Basically it's, uh, imagine if a variable is a box, then sequences are like uh, lockers where there are multiple boxes for you to store your stuff. So I believe there are four types of sequences. There's the tuples. Oops. There are tuples, there are lists, and then there are dictionaries, and there's the special one set. So I guess I'll start talking about tuples first. And we have the dictionary and then the set. So tuples is a very, uh, how to say, uh, it's very the, the most, I would say the most primitive out of all. Basically you have a locker over here or like a sequence where you can store your stuff. Right. And then, um, the list of items have an index zero, one, two, three. Very easy, All right? And for tuples, right? Once you create it, you cannot do anything about it. You cannot change it. You cannot add anything to it. You cannot reduce, subtract it. Once you have put an object inside the locker, inside it, right? A, B, C. Nothing can change. The index is always numbers. And yeah, this is what you call uh, immutability. That it cannot mutate. Now, the opposite of immutability is mutability and that would be list. It's actually, um, in terms of looks, right? It looks very similar to tuples, but basically list is like tuples on steroids. Lah. So this is uh, a list where it's, it's also a locker. You can store your stuff in it and the index is in number. But then if you don't like the contents yet, right, you can always change it. So like F or perhaps to 1000. You can always change the value. Now, a dictionary is also like a list. A dictionary is also like a list where you also have lockers, you can have values in it. But I guess what makes it different is the index. Now in dictionary, right, the index must be defined. This is the, this is a locker where you can actually give name. So like, for example, I'll give like the name as an, as an apple, an, an orange, a banana, and mango. So you can give your um, your lock your locker spaces a name instead of just numbers. So this is also mutable. However, there are some uh, requirements for the name. For example, the name should not be mutable as well. So like the name, the the names right, the names over here should not be mutable and it should be something that's fixed up meaning that you cannot have a list as your name you cannot have another dictionary as the name the name can be a tuple or a string or a number simply things that cannot change lah and lastly we have the set set is uh, to be fair it's actually more even more primitive than tuples uh, set is the special one here because set is I don't, I don't think you can say that it's a locker. A set is more like a group of objects. It's more like a group of objects. Lah. And it will take note of, and what's unique about set is that um, it can only store one per object. So say you have the word 
Apple. Uh, orange, CS, then, then CS, CS, Apple, etc. The res this set, right, this particular set over here will only give me four items in it, which is Apple, Orange, CS, and then, then. So it will give me actually unique results. It won't give me like um, differing results, etc., etc. So in this case, set will only like gives you the unique uh, members of its uh, group. So it's pretty the different one out here. So um, that's a summary lah, of the difference between tuples, lists, dictionaries and sets. So in this case, we have a tuple, which is very primitive, which you cannot really do anything about it. Once it's initiated, you cannot do it, you cannot change it. So if you want to create, a, uh, if you want to change the value of a tuple, you kind of have to create a new tuple. You need to create a new locker. Now tuples have a few operations that you can do with it. For example, you can uh, sum up the values inside of it. You can find the maximum value, the minimum value, the length, and that's it, mostly. Now for list, right? Because list is like this, the super version of tuples. It can do whatever a tuple can do. Also, it has additional operations that it can do as well, which we'll discuss later on using the tutorial questions. Dictionary is basically a list, but then like instead of having numbers at a predefined numbers as index, you can define your own index. And lastly, we have set that is uh, can just like you know tell you that what the uh, what are the members inside a group of things. Now you can always convert one to the other. Like you can con you can convert tuples to lists, you can convert lists to tuples, you can convert tuples to sets, you can convert lists to sets, and vice versa. Uh, now, to convert tuples and lists to dictionary is going to be a bit uh, different. Because remember, right, in the dictionary, you kind of need the name as well. Because the name is not predefined for you. So the way, so for tuples and lists to be converted to dictionary, uh, it's not that easy lah. Okay, so any questions so far? If there are no questions, perhaps uh, just give a thumbs up. All right, if there are no questions, then we'll just uh, talk about the tutorial. So for tutorial, just open your tutorial worksheet and prepare your, uh, prepare your um, Zoom chat. I'll just uh I'll just ask questions la, and you guys just send the answer in the Zoom chat. Okay. So uh we have this first uh I think there are like few boxes here. So I think um okay, so uh I think we'll just start with the first box. Um can you tell me the answer? There should be four lines here. We have like no lah, just give me uh, this one. What's the answer to print learn tuple C? Anyone? Maybe not send it to me privately, maybe in the uh, Everyone chat so everyone can see. <laughs> uh, Aaron, I I can only send it privately. I don't know why. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, oh, it must have been from the practical exam. Um, let me change the settings first. Sorry, sorry. Ah, okay, okay. I think you should have been able to send it to everyone now. Can you send it to everyone?
All right. Cool, cool. So yeah, um, so we'll start iterating. So like we have a tuple A over here, right? Um, tuple A, which is 10, 11, 12, 13. And if it does print some value, right? Um, 10, 11, 12, 13, it basically prints it as per normal. And then tuple B, CS and 10, print it as per normal. And then tuple C, we have tuple A plus tuple B, which is so this is the fe defining feature of tuples, uh, where yeah, I have a question, uh, just to clarify, like tuple at least both can store different data different data types in their in the same tuple at least, is it? Can can in Python, right? In Python, or everything in Python, right? It's very fluid. The data structure is very fluid. Like you can you can store anything you want, lah. So you, you can see here, right? You can actually store multiple different things. You can even store a list inside the list, a tuple inside a tuple, a list inside a tuple, a tuple inside a list, a dictionary okay. inside a tuple. But why I remember like, I don't know from, from some slides or some prof saying like, is it other languages like only tuple or list can only store one, the same data type? Yes, correct. In other languages, like for example, Java, right? You cannot mix and match to, uh, as you like. Lah. Is it for list or tuple? Uh, different languages have different data structures. Uh. Like, uh, for example, in Java, right, they don't, they don't really have lists. Eh, eh, oh, they do have lists, but they don't array really have and array list, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to say, because like, it depends on the other languages as well. Sometimes they don't have the exact equivalent. Sometimes it's just like, there's a different data structure. So in Python, we have a tuple and a list, and dictionary and a set. In other data, in other like programming languages, you gotta learn the data structures themselves. Uh. I wouldn't say like, oh, there's a tuple in other data structures. Even I'm not really aware of that. I mean, like my experience is only like Python and Java. My C++ is very rusty already. Mostly in other languages, right? Um, there's only list la. And other data structures that's not covered in this module. Okay, so anyways, so if you can see right, in tuples, the way you add it, it's just like adding, you know, remember when you add strings, right? When you add string A and string B and you just combine them. So imagine like each box in the tuple is like a letter on its own, a character in the side of string. So you just like combine it like this. Lah. Okay. So next we have, uh, next we have print 11 in tuple A. So um, basically, it checks whether the value is inside tuple A or not. Uh, I'm not gonna ask you guys because it's just like true false. So in this case, like um, 10, 11, 12, 13, uh, you can just, uh, there's 11. All right, it prints 11. So there's 11 here, so it should print true, which it, which it does, right? And then print 14 in tuple B, it does, it will print false because there's no 14. And I think this one is interesting. Uh, print C in tuple C. Is is it true or false? What do you guys think? Print C in tuple C. Why is it false? Huh? Why is it false? Correct, correct. All right, you guys are damn good already. Yes, it does check for the whole element. So I like um, here it checks whether the object C exists in one of the elements. So if it's only like you take like only like CS, right? Then you check is whether C is inside the string net, it can lah. So this should print false. And now this part over here is indexing, right? The way we index is the same way as we index string. So like, in fact, the way you index in string, right, is actually the way we index for all sequences, whether it's list, it's tuples, it's dictionary. So tuple one will should give us like the object in the first box, 
which is correct and then right and then yeah tuple d can anyone give me a tuple d yes tuple d is tuple b zero times four Can anyone give me what supple D in this chat? Like what is top top T top D here? Okay. So there are several answers. Okay, so actually okay. So, okay, interesting, there are several answers. So in this case, the answer is actually, uh, is actually uh, the string CS, 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 CS. So I think um, the reason is um, when you call tuple B, right, tuple B over here, press my pen, tuple B over here, right? tuple B will actually uh, return the content in, uh, inside the box. So this will actually give us CS. So when you check the type of tuple B, it will give us string. So, uh, so I think uh, Chun Tian gives us like a tuple of like CS times four. This is the case if if uh, tuple B, right? Tuple B is equal to like uh, something like this. So the string is enclosed in another tuple. Lah. Hence, uh, the boxes will look like this. So that's the case if that's the case if you have like CS times four. Uh, okay, so so be careful. Tuple D is not a tuple at all. Now tuple B. So I I guess you can can the, can expect what the value of tuple B is, right? So tuple B one is times four. Tuple B one is like ten ten. Times four, it should be like forty forty. Okay. All right, uh, next up, we have uh, tuple E. Tuple E is tuple D from one uh, till the end. Can anyone tell me what is the value of tuple E? What is the value of tuple E here? How oh, is it empty? Tuple D is this. It's just normal string string slicing law, like S E S E S E S, right? It's just standard string slicing. So yeah, this is tuple F is also standard string slicing. You'll just reverse it. Uh, it's just like basically the standard string slicing lah. Tuple G is SSS. Um, I, I believe you guys can do the slicing on your own already, so I won't go through it anymore. But, but, yes? but isn't for tuple E right? Why mm -hmm. why isn't the the index one referring to the index in a tuple? Why is it referring to the index in the string? Because in this case the CS 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 right, it should be at the zeroth index of the tuple right. So when you say tuples one until the end, why isn't it referring to the index one in the tuple? If it's like uh, the case, then it should be empty. Uh. Okay. Uh, yeah, again, uh, I think uh, yeah, Mohammed mentions a good point that tuple D is not a tuple. Tuple D is actually a string, a string of CS, 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 CS. 
it's like remember like as we uh, as I explained earlier um, what's tuple D is tuple D is uh, tuple B times 4 right and tuple B is actually the string CS tuple B is actually the string CS over here so it's already it's like you know you take out the items in from from the box outside and now we have the object CS here and because it's a string, right, you just treat it like a string as per normal. So a string times four is CS, 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 CS. It's a string with eight characters. So you slice it as per normal. It's okay. It's okay, it's okay. I think it's a good question. I don't think it's a bad question. At, at least now you understand, like, how do we actually, like, call things out? Because I think your confusion is, uh, it's normal, uh. It's okay. So next we have a uh, tuple i over here. Now tuple i here is actually pretty unique because it's in fact it's not really a tuple. Uh. It's not a tuple at all. If you see right, uh, tuple i is actually uh, a number. Now uh, tuple j is, if you can predict, it's actually the actual tuple. Uh. So if you can see here, right, tuple i is not a tuple, tuple j is a tuple. And if you can see, there's the difference is there's a comma. So you, I think you should be careful because in here, right, um, the brackets here, right, the brackets here does not refer to the brackets or a tuple, but the brackets here actually refers to the arithmetic brackets. Okay, so um, in this case, the bracket one will be evaluated just as one. Uh. So when you do multiplications, it does affect the results as well. Tuple i is uh, tuple i is not a tuple; it's just a number one. So when you multiply four, it's just gonna give you four. And tuple j times four, it just gives you one 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 one. Okay. So I think this one is an interesting part. Lah. So this is actually what happens when you actually do a, when you actually multiply a tuple. Same as a str uh, string character, when you just multiply a string character, it's just like multiply. You just like combine them. And this one is the same, lah. you just combine the boxes. And maybe, and uh, pointing this to the difference earlier, to uh, where the, the tuple, the, the part over here lah. So if you can see right, this you, you need to remember what is being multiplied here. In this case right, this is something that, you know, um, you kind of have taken the object out. So like the box, right, the tuple box is gone already. Well, in this case, right, it's still in the very, in the raw form of a tuple. It's still in this form. While the other one, right, is the, this one, right, is still in this, it's already this particular string. So I think that one is something that you want to pay attention as well. Like, what is being multiplied? Because it kind of affects the result as well. Okay, so lastly, uh, basically, uh, we have uh, um, the max min of a tuple. So this is what you can do. Lah. So max of a tuple A should, uh, it, it should give me, uh, yeah. Why does it give? Oh, the minimum of tuple A gives me 10, which is quite intuitive. Then the maximum of tuple A gives me 13. And then, okay, there's a reason why I commented this part out. Can anyone tell me why I commented this part out? Like, what happens if you evaluate uh, max and minimum of tuple C, which is uh, this one? You can't compare different data types, is it? Then you have error. Yes, correct. 
you cannot compare different data types. So when you actually try to call max, maximum and minimum, right, you should be very careful. Because uh, yes, like tuples can actually contain many different types, but then you gonna need to, but then yeah, lah, like you cannot use it for maximum and minimum. So this is actually pretty useful, lah, like when you actually try to find the smallest number, biggest number of an array, of smallest or biggest string of an array, you can use this. So as long, so remember, when you try to call maximum and minimum of a, of an sequences, you need to make sure that everything is in the same data type, and the data type should be able to compare to one another. Okay, just remember that lah. So minimum tuple e is uh, in this case is tuple e is a string, so it will take uh, c as the smallest since c comes earlier before s, and the maximum is s. Okay. And then lastly, the fun part of tuples is that because it's sequence, right? You can actually loop through a sequence. So in this case, like for i and tuple p, tuple p is cs then then you can actually loop through them. C, uh, c you print cs, and then you print then then. See, like the value of i, oops, the value of i actually changes lah. Yes, and then a ten ten. Okay, that's the end of tuples. Yay. Uh, one more question. Yes. What? Why is minimum tuple is C? Why is not the? Why is not integer? Pardon? I beg your pardon. Oh, maybe I tap down. Yeah. Like I I heard the first part. Like why is it not? Like why is it C? But I didn't hear hear heard the second part. Okay, it's, it's time for questions because like we're done with the first part. So, yeah. Any questions regarding the first part? Oh, not yet. We're not really done yet. Uh. But yeah. Um, at least for the first part, we're done. Uh. Why minimum tuple is C not a number? Ah, I'm not so sure what you meant. I mean, tuple E is a string lah. So, yeah. Um, the minimum of a tuple E is just like, you take the smallest character out of all, since there are no numbers. So, I think for more on tuples, I think you can just like find Python tup documentation. And yeah, uh, you can just learn about tuples lah here. Okay, that, that's not a good one. So yeah, there's actually a pretty good documentation where you can learn about lists and tuples. Ah, uh, here. Okay. I think this is a pretty interesting. Uh, hi. Yeah? So we need to know about the like, priority of each letter. Is it like S is like C is bigger than S or S is bigger than C or D? Yes, 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 you do. I think oh. we discussed this on the first tutorial already. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Okay. Uh, Alright. Uh, okay, I'll just move on then if there are no questions. Um, this one. Um... So if you guys are not aware, right? Um, actually, like the function range actually generates generates a sequence of numbers. Yeah, I mean, yeah lah. So it doesn't. It's not range. It's not just like for, just for a particular for loop, just to, for it to repeat five times or six times. But it it actually creates an array of sequences. So I think uh we can try out. So I think um. There's like one, two, three, five, five parts. So maybe you guys can just type out in the Zoom chat what's the answer for A. No need to like space, uh, just like just write the numbers in one line. What will the output be for A? Just write all the numbers in one line. Lah.
All right. So yeah, the answer is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. By default, it will always start at 0 if nothing is defined. And it will stop at n exclusively. Meaning, it will stop right before n. Lah. All right. Well done. So what is b then? b, b, b. All right. Good job. It's we start at two inclusively. So we start at two, continue, and make sure we stop right before five. So five. Oops, we exceeded. We'll stop there. Next up, we have two five two. We have C. What's the answer for C? All right, two four. So we start two, and then since there is a step here. Uh, plus 2, which is 4. Then uh, plus 2 again, which is 6. But oops, 6 has exceeded 5. So I don't go there. Okay. Next up for D. Give me the answer for D. Yep. So for D, it, it is the reverse way. So we'll start at 5. And then do a minus 1. 4. Another minus 1. 3. Minus 1. 2. Oops, I've touched one already, so I should not touch that. So lastly, what's the results for E? Any choice for E? No choice? Yes, there should be no output lah. It's not an error, but there should be no output lah. So, for example, so yeah, uh, I have this Python over here. Oops. So range list range five six one. Yeah, there should be no output lah. It's empty. The range object itself. Yeah, the range object will stay as an object. So to see, you need to convert it to a list lah. In comparison, you can actually see it earlier, like when you do if one, it does generate five, four, three, two. Okay. Um, because remember, right? Uh, it always evaluates whether the number has uh, exceeded the stop point or not. Um. Okay, so in this case, right? Uh. Remember that it's negative, right? I think this one is important as we remember before, right? Negative means that we traverse backwards. So we have five here. And then we see, um, has five gone past six or not? And in this thing, right? Because we're moving backwards, right? Five has passed six because in the, in the line number, right? Five is already on the right side, left side of six, lah. So in this case, five is five should not be included already because it's already past your stopping point. Okay. Okay. So is it clear on range? Any questions, guys? I think I just a little comment. Uh, a little comment. Sometimes. Sometimes. When you do not need your range in your for loop, right? You don't have to like do a like for i in shit. Uh, sometimes you don't have to do like uh for for i in range like one to like n plus one. Like if you're not gonna use the value of i, right? Just just simply like write for i in range n it will repeat the same number of times it will repeat both n times but then for this one like it's it's just much clearer lah, how much you repeat also um, in fact if you are if you are creating a for loop that you don't even need the value inside the iteration right which is pretty rare but it is possible you just need to repeat it multiple times for example in the case of drawing the strike, the star turtle in your first assignment, right? You can in fact use an underline to denote 
uh, iteration lah. Just, this one is just like for the sake of giving a variable name lah. So the reason you want to do this is because you don't, you want to focus less on the iteration and focus more on the code. So like just like four underscore in range and this one is actually valid. Okay. So uh, any questions? If there are no questions, maybe feel free to just like, uh, feel free to just like give a thumbs up. All right, cool. Um, all right, cool. Okay, I need to move on. I am quite running out of time already. Um, next up, we have a list. So list is the more fun part. So uh, yeah, we actually have like several boxes. So uh, let's see. Here. See, it's quite fun. So we'll start at the top. Uh, we have a list, CS1010. It will give me an object list. Print A, list A, print B. Uh, this one is pretty interesting if you can see. Actually, list B actually creates a new object and inside the first part, right, it will actually point to another tuple, which is another object, which is a tuple. So, um, Again, we have this classic old question. Let's see, this A plus this B. Can anyone give me the answer for this? What is list A plus this B? No, actually, yeah, what's list A plus this B? Maybe just tell me the length, uh, like what's the length of list C? Okay, so yeah, uh, thanks Grace. Uh, so basically, again, just like a string, you just concatenate them. But then if, you, if there's something interesting here, in fact, in, um, these two objects, right, uh, points to the same object over here, okay? So it's not like, um, it's not like it creates a new tuple and moves it here, but then it, these two are pointing to the same thing. So next up, we have uh, this tuple A, CS1010, but then I'll just skip this one. Because like, again, uh, again, I say like, you cannot like change the value inside the tuple. But then if I do a list A1, 20, 30, right, I can actually change the value. Lah. So in this case, I have my list A part, I change the value to 20, 30, and yeah, the value changes. Which is that. See, 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 it's quite fun. So I print a change. Now this is the exciting part, I think. This is the interesting part. We have append and extend. Maybe can can you guys like, maybe for those of you who know, maybe you guys want to try like, what is the difference between append and extend? Let me know in the chat. What's the difference between append and extend? It's okay, don't be shy, I just give it a shot. Let's, if you if you don't know, just write don't know. It's okay, don't be shy. Okay, <laughs> thanks Mohammed. Thanks Akil. Okay, so you're not sure. Vincent is quite close. Most of the time you append an element and extend a list, but technically you can append a list. You, you do can append a list, okay? So I think in this way, like it's correct, he, we append an element. So in this case, like, see like when we append an E, right? It just like adds a new box E. It, it creates a new box and then inserts it. And when you extend easy, right? Easy here is a one object, right? But then when you extend easy to this, right? It, it actually like creates a, a lot of more boxes. Lah. Okay, that's not really explanatory, isn't it? So I think I'll just give another example. 
So I say I have a, a list here, say a TS 1010, right? I'll append it with an object earlier, easy. Okay, it doesn't help. Uh, I'll create a list first. So say I have a list here, All right? And then list uh, append easy. The list will be CS and then easy. Meaning that for append right, it will just like create a new box on the right. It will create a new box. And then just like whatever is that inside it, it will just fill it with it, okay? So I think the more extreme example is when you try to append with another list. So for example, I have another list, I heart you. So in the case of append, right? Uh, if you can see, right, it will actually append it wholly. So it will just create a new box at the end and it will just like create We'll just insert whatever inside the parameter into it. So in this case, right, if you see like the length of this list is still actually four. But then when you try to extend, right, that's a different story. <coughs> Sorry. So in this case, right, say I have uh, this list again, I'll reset. I'll do this again, but then what I want to do is extend. What it happens is that it will actually like breaks down the list inside. It will try to break down whatever is inside the parameter for extend. It will try to break it down and try to attach it at the end one by one. Lah. That's why in the case for easy, right? E even though easy is a string, right? But it is a sequence. So what it tries is that it will try to break down the sequence into smaller bits. And then like those smaller bits, right, append it one by one, uh, stick it one by one at the end of the list. Unlike append, la, where it just like takes the entire chunk and put it inside, regardless of it being a list or a string or a number or object, etc. Any questions regarding the difference between append and extend? This one is actually pretty important. Can extend work for multiple data types at once uh yeah sure you can if i get what you mean like uh yeah so if it's a string they will break break it down lah. so in this case like maybe like we have uh, i love you 3000 yeah so you can So if you extend a uh, list inside easy, the result will be the same as append easy. Correct. So I'll do this for you. This one is easy. Yep, see, the, that's the object. So basically, this one, it creates like somewhat a box that makes sure that it doesn't break down. Lah. Make sure that extend doesn't break down the content. It's like the shell casing of an m, &M candy. It makes sure that the chocolate doesn't break down yet. Any other questions? Yes, because the in extend right, the string will be recognized as a sequence. It will be recognized as a sequence of characters. It won't happen like, when uh, you try to extend a number. For example, uh, uh, I have a number like 10, 10. Oh, sorry, my bad. You cannot extend a number then. Yeah, for extend, you can only like, uh, you can only extend a sequence. So yeah, in this case, see, type error, the object should be an iterable, meaning it should be an object that can be iterated. List, sequences are basically. Any other questions? If not, just thumbs up. If there are questions, please just ask because this is quite important. This one is actually very, uh, can be quite confusing. 
All right, if there are no more questions, I'll move, proceed. So then uh, we have this, uh, this thing here, uh, copy B, uh, is list B then string. So what it does is that it tries to copy la. It just, it tries to copy B. But then if you can see right, even then it, when it tries to copy the list of B right, the reference inside is not, the tuple is not copied like It just copies the dot over here. So when I try to change right, uh, cop but then, but then because this is a whole new structure, right, you can just change the dot law inside. So inside copy B1 right, uh, it's hard. Um, I change it, it becomes different. Lah. So copy B here, I change the value or at index one is hard. It will break down the connection with the tuple. But then like list B is not affected at all. See, it's not affected. Okay, next we have list D. Okay, it's even longer. La. List D is, uh, we have like uh, a list and then to another list. And then copy D. So remember, la, this is a way to copy a list. La. Uh, which we copy, so the result should be the same. La. Okay. Now here's what's actually pretty interesting, right? Um, uh, list D is one zero, meaning that uh, list uh, list D here, one, and then zero. We try to change the value to nine. I mean, it's a list, right? We can change the value. Now, what's gonna happen is, uh, right? Uh, I I changed the value to nine already. See, like the value is changed to nine. And then when I print copy D, right, the value also changes. Copy D is uh, 193 instead of 123. So I think one, here, one thing to pay attention here is that you can see that in some instances, right, when you copy a list over, right, you don't copy the entire thing. Sometimes you just copy a reference to another object. So when that, op that reference, that object that it refers to is being changed, right, in this case, is this thing over here. Even though like, wait, this is copy, this is list. Even though like, um, I don't change, I don't change the value of copy one zero, but then it is changed through list one zero, which is kind of linked to each other through the same object. Hence, the value inside this is also changed as well. So when you check the value for list D equals to copy D, it is actually the same lah. But then they're not the same object. So list D is not copy D. There are two separate boxes. But then the value is the same lah. But then if you check the content, right? If you check the content, whether these two are the same, they are actually the same object lah. See, it's true that these two are the same objects. They are referring to the same box. Confusing? But that doesn't have pin with B and copy B cause tuple. Oh no, that doesn't happen. Uh, okay. Um, the reason why it doesn't happen with B and copy B was that because like in this case, right? Um, yeah, let me move a bit earlier. Okay. Bit here. Uh, I, I I want to know because I think I searched a bit before. Like, mm. is it is it the reason why why it only changes like cause list D if you copy D right if you only change the first layer of the list right uh i think it won't change but you are changing the second layer like uh, the list in the list that's why the nine will follow the change in the copy uh. so is it 
background in Python when you put the assignment style, does it create a shallow copy of list D for copy D? Yeah, la. yeah correct, correct. Basically, it will create a shallow copy. So yeah, if you can see right, uh, this one right, when I want to do copy B, I change right. What I change is actually the dot over here. So it doesn't happen lah. So I'm changing this particular box. And which is not linked with this box over here lah. So when I change this right, it's, it should not be affect. It doesn't affect lah. See? If you see the animation lah, it, it just changes here. It doesn't change this object over here. But then when I go to list D right over here, list D is like, um, wait, sorry, it's a bit slow. This particular assignment over here, right? This particular assignment here, right? What it tries to change is actually the, uh, wait, I mean, what it tries to change is actually this box over here. Okay. Actually, can, can you try changing list D like? at index zero into nine instead of, instead of changing the two, you change the one like, list D at index zero to nine. Will okay. copy D change also? Cause it's the first layer. Um, yeah la, like yeah. basically if I'm, you, correct, correct. So like in this case, right, if say I, wait, I'll let me edit it. So say if I take this, So in this case, right, say I, I don't change the one zero, like, I change just like one over here. Okay, pay attention, like I just change one. What happens is that, um, yeah, I create list D and then I create another copy D, right? But then I change at say, I change the index one at this particular box. Like, I don't access this particular list. I change that to nine. So what happens is that it just breaks the link. Like, you just change whatever is in the first layer. Copy D, list D. Okay. Uh, why do we need to add zero? Can, cannot just leave it to list one. I mean, the reason we add uh, zero is that we want to show you guys that if you are actually an accessing another list inside a list and changing it right, it will affect all the list that is reference to that point lah. That's the reason why we want to show uh, this one. Uh, we want to add this particular thing. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, it's okay. If you guys don't understand, actually this is the point of the this week's tutorial. It's actually to show you like what happens if you change things. In fact, it will be shown more in the next part of the question lah, which is list mutation. Okay. So we have these two part pieces, four pieces of code, lah, which is uh, the first list and second list, a uh, second row, first row and second row. I think we'll try to see the differences first. Um, so in this case, we have like, uh, we have an, a traditional number and a list over here. And then uh, Y is assigned to X. And in this case, Y is also assigned to X. And then you print X. And then you change. So what happens here is like, uh, assign X, assign X. Assign Y equals to X. And then three is change X. And then you see what happens. Uh. So, So in this case, when we have primitive uh, state uh, object, uh, we have numbers, right? Uh, you assign x equals to one, then assign y to x. Y is one also. You change the value x is two, and then when you print x and y, it basically prints two and one. So in this case, if you see right, when they equals y to x, it simply just copies the value over, law. Okay. And when you do it with list, it's a bit different. Because uh, you create list x, 
and then you create list Y, and actually it refers to the same point. And when you change the value at list X, uh, both are changed. Okay. So I think the first keyword that you guys want to pay attention here is whether it's um, primitive or not. When it's a primitive data type, right? What is primitive? Primitive is like the very classic data types. String, integer, boolean, float. This is primitive. When you do assignments like this, y equals to x. When it's primitive, you what happens is that you just copy the value over. That's why when it's primitive data type, right? You can actually immediately store the values inside the global frame. And when the value is actually stored inside the global frame, you just copy it over. Now, if you want to think about it, right, just think like primitive data types are data types that are pretty small. Now, if you think about it, right, in list, list is pretty big and it's not primitive. That's why like lists are pretty big. That's why like when it's in a global frame, right, it doesn't store the actual list. That's why if you see, right, why is it represented as a dot, right? It's not that it's too big that it cannot fit, but more like, in a global frame, the variable list x does not contain the actual list. It doesn't contain the actual object, but it actually contains the address to the object, which is in the object space like, over here. Okay, so it creates an object. It, uh, list x contains an address, the address, uh, your home address, any address to this particular object in the object space. I think I'll change the color of the object space to say green. So you have like a universe of objects. Okay, I'll answer your question after this, I'll, your question is quite long. Uh, I'll try to read after this. So when it, uh, assigns list y to list x, right? What it does is, in fact, it it copies the pointer. It copies the address to the object. So in this case, right, the primitive part is the address. Lah. So in this case, list x and list y points to the same object. Hence, when I change the value list x, right, in this case, list x0, what it does is that it tries to access the object, object over here it tries to access the object. And these list X and list Y points to the same object. So yeah, um, okay, correct, Bingston. So like when a Python tries to read, read list X and list Y, list X and list Y are actually pointers. See, these are points. They are pointers to, another, to something else. And when you are trying to copy it, right, or you do assignment, right, so what's being assigned is actually the pointer instead of the actual object. So is this clear with everyone? If it's clear, maybe thumbs up with the first question. Okay. So yeah, this is what happens in the first question. You assign an x and then assign y equals to x and then you change the value of x and see whether y ch changes or not. So yeah, a question is, is list x equals to list y true? Yes, the answer is list x is equals to list y. In fact, in fact, uh, list, in fact, uh, okay. Can change the edit the code. In fact, if you print this, in fact, if you print this right, this this will print as true because both of them are actually the same objects. Okay, so I think next part right. Next part is similar. Um, uh, next part, you assign a to a particular value. Uh, one, assign A, and then two, 
uh, inside a function multiply a then three see the difference okay so is list is an object does a list class exist in fact list is a class it's it is a class actually. Okay. So I assign an A and then inside an F, multiply an A. So what's gonna happen here is uh is this my no this is mine. Yes. So yeah, we'll see what happens. So I think this one we all know what happens. Lah. We actually talked about this like last week or two weeks ago. I can't remember. So yeah, it creates a global frame for and then it creates a function foo. See it, actually if you ob observe right. Foo here also does a pointer. So it does not, foo itself does not contain the function, but the variable foo actually contains a pointer to an object, which is a function object. And then I print a, which is for obviously in the global frame. And then it calls foo. And uh, foo, there's a frame here, x equals a four, x times two is eight. The value of foo x inside of foo changes and you print it becomes eight and then you, you print a is still four okay i think i'll just keep it here now the difference with this one i think is that uh shit uh wait so again you have a list and we know that list actually points to another pointer then you create a fun function, print normal photo list A. See, now you see what's going on, right? So uh, when the, the thing that you insert inside your function, right, it's actually a pointer. It's actually an address to that object instead of the actual object being inserted to the list. So we can see actually the list pointer points to this object. So when it tries to multiply the contents inside the list, it immediately modifies the actual list outside. Hence, 243, the value changes already. Okay, I'll keep it this way. So, what's a valuable lesson here, right? I mean, like, what's the point of learning all this is that Yes, list is super powerful that yes, you can change the value inside a list, yada, yada, yada. But then because you can change the value inside a list, it becomes unstable in a you know, certain way. Or if you can say it's mutable, it's, it can mutate. Yes, you need to be very careful when you're dealing with it. I mean, you know, as Peter Parker said, with great powers comes with great responsibility. So... What is the actual real world applications in this case, right? Is that what you want to do is when you define foo, sometimes, right, this is a good practice, is that before you actually uh, do with something, right, what you want to do is that you want to, uh, what you want to do is actually create a copy first. Okay, I know that this is a shallow copy, it only copies the first layer. But this is what you generally want to do. Like. You just want to copy it first. In a way, like, if you can copy it deeply, then sure. But then what you want to do is actually copy. So you don't change anything. Like. Oops. So, for example, I'll add here. Next. Uh, so here I create a pointer to here, but then I'll change the pointer. Executing this. Nah. So I'll create a new list. Hence, in fact, I'll create I have this particular object over here. Hence, I'm not modifying the original object in the first place. Hence, I can freely do my calculations without actually destroying or disrupting anything. Then once the once the function over, the object is gone. Could you briefly show how to make a deep copy? Oh, okay. 
if you do the same for a tuple, will there be an error? Um, technically, you don't really have to do it for tuples because remember, you cannot change the value inside a tuple. So you you don't have to be quite concerned with tuples. Because yeah, again, like you cannot change, modify the value inside a tuple. Could you briefly show how to make a deep copy? Wow. Oh. Deep copy. Uh. Uh. Hmm. Let me think. Um. Hmm. Okay. I can. I can. I can. I can. Okay. So say I have a. Say I have a shitty. I have a list like this. Uh, deep copy. Okay. Um. Mm. So um, uh, there are many ways. Uh, uh, this is what I my way. I guess. Yeah, I, I won't be talking right now. I'll focus coding. Type I. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let me check first. So, yeah, you do. Uh, type. Let's type. Uh, uh, you can do a deep copy lah, but say you wanna come up with the, your own algo. Um, I kind of forgot. Uh, Okay lah, say um basically okay lah. Yeah. Basically if I wanna ch I'll, I'll just create so uh if tracks rule, so if um I have an original list, I'll do an iterative version. Uh so for I in list A, if type if the object right, if the item is is a list, then I would do somewhat a recursive call, then like I will do like list append. Append a deep copy of item. Else just append as per normal. I don't know if this works though. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, that's a bit difficult. Uh, okay, I'm not so sure lah, but definitely, um, um, generally, if you want to create a like a deep copy, a uh, deep copy right of something, definitely you want to like iterate. Like, I forgot lah. It should be recursive. So basically, if item is still a list, keep on recursing lah. It's a bit comp. I kind of forgot lah the algo. I think I did before. But then generally, you want to do a recursive call. So like, if so like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right? It should be recursive lah. So like if 
I don't know why is it it returns like uh infinite loop lah, but definitely like this is the kind of so if it's not a that yeah I'll come back to you later lah on that I really but yeah I'm so sorry anyways um. Let's move on to the last question. Um, so yeah, usually um, because now we have learned about data structures or tuples and uh, tuples and lists, right? As we kind of can use tuples and lists to create a data that consists of mixed types. So you kind of can actually, you know, like create like you can say that uh, an order and so remember our burger question, right? An order is a tuple, lah, basically. It's a tuple. So inside where, where the burgers are inside the tuples. Lah. So basically, if you an empty order is represented by an empty tuple, and basically a new order is basically you just add a new burger. Lah. Okay. So you can create an order like this. And you can come up with a function like enough money or not. And you can do like a print receipt. Okay. Um, I will I will not go through this. I think I'll go through this like um, later. I um yeah okay mm, I mean it's already eleven twenty like and I really do wanna like just open Q and A for like uh practicals I mean this one is just like implementation from like what we learned earlier lah so I think you guys can try it on your own and just like if you guys got any questions just ask me lah via personal chat. Uh, it should not be that hard, really. It should not be that hard. Like, if you guys actually follow the tutorial materials like every week, it should not be that hard. Um, I think I'll just open the time for any uh, questions regarding practicals. But then, before you guys do anything, right, I just want to give some, let you guys know. Lah. So, uh, I just knew this from the other TAs. Lah. So, this practicals, right, um, you're not supposed to open anything else, right? But then uh, you are allowed to use Python's inbuilt in. You can use Python's uh, own documentation lah. So if you can, if you notice here, I, I do actually do something here. Help. Uh, auto clear. So uh, in Python, there's this function called help, where if you just write type help right help of anything it will give you some it will give you information on it lah. so for example this is help string so yeah a string is an object uh, creates a new string object yada 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 and you can actually see here that um, you can actually see here that um, there's actually a lot of functions inside string that you kinda can use lah. For example, like you can there's capitalize, case for um, find, s dot find, s dot format, and its functions is ASCII, is decimal, is printable, is numeric, join, etc. There are a lot of functions that you can use lah. So in the case like when you're stuck, when you need to deal with string and you don't know how to deal with it, you can kind of find functions lah. Maybe for more, maybe you can do like. Be more specific. Help dot string dot upper. Uh, basically, it helps you describe uh, what it does. Try to uh, get used to this. So, like when the time comes, you kinda understand what to do, lah. I think, for example, we have help tapo. Yeah, this is tapo. A built-in immutable sequence. 
If no argument is given, the constructor returns an empty tuple. If an iterable is specified, the tuple is initialized. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if you can see, tuple have count index. You can do another thing like help max. So you can always ask about functions, about objects, and etc. Uh, well, let's try. Yep, it does still work. So, right end method of random random instance return random integer in range A, B, including both endpoints. Full right. So I think this is one thing that you can help. Um, okay, another common question is that what should be in your cheat sheet? Uh, what should be in your cheat sheet? Uh, generally speaking, if you are, I mean, it's practical exam lah. Practical exam. So what you want to cheat in the cheat sheet is perhaps like um, string documentation. Like what? Like I think you what you want to do is like what can you do with string? So like. You perhaps want to read all these things and learn about their features. Okay, I think there's a lot of good reference here. And then perhaps data structures, tuples, and lists. Like, uh, yeah, you perhaps want to learn like, what can a list do? Append, extend. There are some things that we haven't discussed today, such as insert, remove, pop, clear, index, count, Sort, this one is pretty fun. Sort, reverse, copy. So there's a lot of things that, that perhaps you guys wanna, this is another thing that you wanna include in your cheat sheet. Hmm, what else that should be included? Maybe like some answer keys to some practical pa exam papers. I guess like the best way to, the best way to prepare for practicals is just practice lah. There's no other way out. Okay, so um, okay um, I'll open mm, from now till like the end of like until like eleven fifty. I'll uh, just if you guys got any questions regarding practicals, raise them now, lah. I I still have question like, how does the assignment the equal sign work for list? Cause just now right, if you have list C assigned to list A plus list B, right? It will create a new list, right? But then mm -hmm. just now you have list X assigned to list Y, then mm -hmm. it should away copy the reference. So why is it different? Uh? Is it is it like cause list A, then you have equals to two other lists add together? Yeah, because I think, okay, for, list, for this particular point, right? Like list C, where's list C? Yeah. List C is... Here, uh, yeah, why is it different? Both I, are assignments. How, how does assignment work in the background? Because technically, I think this one is like, um, this one is quite special. I mean, because like this one is actually, there's some operation that is being done. You want to combine two lists. And when you want to combine two lists, right? Yeah, what happens is that it, it becomes a copy, la, shallow copy. So in this case, right, there's no operation. Well, what, what, what happens? If you put list C equals to list A dot X dot extend list B, then will the pointer in A point to B, then the C point to the A? Oh, you cannot. Class? No, you cannot do that. Um, yeah, I think I'll just give another example, maybe like maybe this one. I think this one is a better example. Okay, so this one is list Y. It equals to list x plus uh, brackets lah. So what happens here is that um, instead of doing the assignment first, it actually does this operation first lah. And when a list uh, is involved in operations like plus, minus, um, what happens is that it will just like, it will do a shallow copy lah. Cause like when you do like uh, man, uh, operations like this, uh, how to say it? like. Oh, I so, think so the thing, 
doesn't lie within the assignment. Uh. It lies within the operation. Uh. So yeah. whenever something does an operation, it first does a copy of it. Uh. Do a shallow copy. Because like I think in this case, right, what Python knows that it will be quite messy. Lah. Because like in this case, right, you don't know like in this particular list, like you don't know like whether this list goes to X or this list goes to the other list. Lah. So okay, like, in this case, like it doesn't know like whether list B should go to list A or list A should go to list B. It's just like a list is being created out of nowhere. So then it is safest to do like a shallow copy. And then like after doing this, then it's assigned to list C. So like after the baby is born, it is assigned to a parent. So, now so, you, so it's more like the plus is a, op, is a function that takes in two mm. parameters. Then after it creates a copy, it returns the value. Uh. Yeah, lah. I think it's better to think it that way. Now earlier you mentioned about this, right? Uh, List y is equals to list x extend extend, extend, extend another set. list. Yeah, then with the cursor, cause when you extend right, then the one your list x will point at the back will point to the a and b right. Then will list y point to list x. Now, uh, I'll just say straightforward uh, This doesn't work because list x dot extend does not return anything. In it doesn't return oh. anything. So in this case, when you do this, right, it will yeah. assign none to list y. I think, oh yeah, let me take out my oh. notes first, my own personal notes. So I think when, um, okay. So I think, uh, yeah. Uh, can you see my, oh, you cannot see my screen, isn't it? Uh, damn it. Uh, why is it this way? Computer, why are you disappointing me? Uh, yeah, I'll pull something up first. What? I forget it. Okay, I'll just take this out. So, in this case, we have a list of operations right over here. There are some operations that does not return anything. So for example, this one, the first three over here, append, extend, and reverse. It will modify the list, right? It will modify the list, but then it will return nothing. So it will just return none. In other words, it returns. Um, yeah. In other words, this will return none. It will directly modify the list. Lah. But then it doesn't return the list. So the object list will be modified and then it just returns none. Now things will be a little bit different lah, when it's other parts. The other parts will have a, re a return value, but it depends on the function as well. Lah. So I think one thing to note here is that even if you when you modify a list using any of these, right, it does not give any return values. Okay. So please right do, during exam, don't do this. Okay, I think a, a lot of you sometimes do this lah. List x equals to list x extend because like you what you because you are so used to the idea like if you wanna add plus one to say I have an x right. I have an x like this. I have ten and then like I wanna add fifteen to ten lah. I wanna add fifteen to x. You do this, right? It doesn't work that way uh, with list. This is wrong. If you want to do it this style, right, then what you want to do is like list x, list x plus another list. This is correct. But if you want to do it like using the, the functions that they give, just list x dot append. The reason why sometimes you want to use the function is that sometimes you just want to modify whatever list that we currently have already. Lah. You don't want to create a new list. Sometimes it's also there are some pointers that are already built inside the list that you just don't want to change. Lah. Okay. So in this case, um, I hope you guys in terms of list, right, just remember that this is the way you do it. Lah. You create a global frame, then you start pointing, creating boxes, and creating another pointer, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera.
Like I think like this is how you visualize this A lah. Like so it's like a list pointing to another list, pointing to another list. All right, any other questions for, for practicals? Anything lah, actually, like this time, is your time to like just ask any question regarding is, practical. Is it, is it very rushed? Like, should you skip questions that you can't think of answers very quickly and move on to the next one? For you, um, for the thing is like, I don't know whether the prof has uh, learned uh, the I don't know whether how hard the prof will set the paper lah. Cause, I mean, I think the general rule of thumb is that you wanna split your time equally for all questions. That's the general rule of thumb lah. You wanna, usually there are three questions, so like you wanna spend like, maybe like half an hour per question. I mean, uh, for me right, the best way to do the practicals is that you read all the questions from the beginning till the end first. After you finish reading from the beginning till the end, then you start. You pick the easiest question lah first, and you do that first. And another reason, right? I think I read it somewhere. The reason you want to read all the questions first is that while you, is there's a psychological reason lah to that? Is that because like when you are still doing like the first question, you your brain is already starting working on solutions for question two and question three in the background. You may not realize it, but it's already working in the background. That's why your goal is to read the entire question first from the beginning till the end. Also, it also helps you guys to actually like read the questions properly because like I think there's this cohort, right? You guys are pretty bad at reading questions or reading instructions. No offense. But yeah, you guys need to learn how to read questions properly. And lastly, yeah lah, when it comes to coding, right? The first thing that you must do is actually read the question and understand it and plan on paper. A lot of you actually rush to the coding part and skip the planning part and in fact, because you guys are rushing to the coding part, you guys actually, you know, you guys are running like a headless chicken. You guys have no no direction. So yeah, I think you guys, I think like if you exceed a 30 minutes for one question, I say just move on. Move on to the next question. Deal with it later. Deal with it in the background and always start coding on paper. Come up with the pseudo code. Come up with the like English algorithm, like the step by step in English. Come up with that first, then you start coding. Any idea how to troubleshoot the screen recording software? Ah, uh, Cosmology Forum? Uh, any other questions? I think, uh, yeah. Is that method mark if cannot solve to final answer? Um, It usually there will be lah, but it's not gonna be that generous. It's it's not gonna be generous. Like I think one thing that you need to understand is not gonna be generous. Cause like um the fact that your code does not arrive to the final answer means that uh your method doesn't work usually. So if there is, it's not gonna be generous lah. At least like if you got like the data structures right, if you got this and that right, you get like what, one or two marks? Don't hope on it so much lah. So if you cannot solve to the final answer, don't hope for much. Oh yeah, by the way, feel free to unmute yourself by the way on at this stage. If you guys like have done past, past year papers and you guys got any questions regarding the, those past year paper questions, Feel free to ask me. Like, uh, I can't. I, we can discuss together.
Okay lah, if there are no more questions left, um, I'm not, I think I'll just stop holding you guys back. I'll just stop recording here then.